Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to World of Warcraft. Now, long before I started up this YouTube channel, I was a huge fan of MMORPGs. I played a ton of RuneScape, I played a lot of World of Warcraft, and I hadn't really played that very much in the last couple of years. Sure, I did try out the new expansions of WoW, but I never really got fully into it again. Now, the one thing to point out is that I played Alliance for years and years and years, and I've never actually really tried out the Horde side of things. So, since I've been focusing a lot on hardcore games, right, really competitive games, such as, for example, StarCraft, such as more recently Overwatch and whatnot, I figured it's about time we play a game that's a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more story-driven, I suppose, and one where we can just sort of sit back, relax, have some good times, drink some coffee or whatever. I hope you're getting a drink already, because these videos are going to be rather long. Um, but um, it's time to start checking out what the Horde side of the world will look like. Now, I'm a huge fan of lore, I'm a huge fan of stories in general, I read a lot of books, and I've always been really interested in the lore of World of Warcraft. So in this series, I'm gonna make it a relatively story-focused game. I'm gonna be reading quests, I'm gonna be trying to explain everything that I understand of the story that's going on, I'm gonna try and guide you through the situation. So even if you've never played WoW before, or are not a big fan of Warcraft, or you're not familiar with Warcraft, you still should be able to understand what's going on. Now, if you're a veteran, this may be a little bit, you know, very basic, at least at the beginning of things, but bear with me. This is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to this. Like I said, I haven't really played this uh, in a very long time. I've played it some when the most recent expansion, Warlords of Draenor, came out, but with the release uh, of the Warcraft movie and obviously the upcoming release of Legion, the expansion for World of Warcraft, I feel like this is going to be a perfect time to get back into the swing of things. Now, I've always wanted to play a mage. For years, I've played a hunter. I'm still a ranged DPS and hard, as you may have already guessed, um, but I've never really fully played a mage. I've never really committed to playing a mage, and with that, I was thinking about the different classes that I can be running here. So most people seem to be focusing on Orc and Undead Mages, and while they're cool, I figured I'm gonna start off with Blood Elves. So Blood Elves, for those of you unfamiliar, we can actually have a little bit of a look at this, uh, this overview screen right here. Uh, long ago, the majestic High Elves created the splendid golden city of Quel Talas, built around a magical fount of energy known as the Sunwell. When the Lich King destroyed their capital in the Third War, the, survivor the survivors turned to the Horde for help. Now known as the Blood Elves, these refugees are all that remain of the glorious civilization. They strive to rebuild Quel Thalas while struggling against the crippling addiction to the very, very magical energies that once built their empire. So Blood Elves, they're addicted to magic, they have a hard time controlling that magic, and I figured a Blood Elf Mage only makes sense. Now, I've already customized my character the way I want it to be, so obviously I'm gonna be calling it Loco right here, and it is time to get started. The past few years have seen unprecedented changes within the eternal land of Quel'Thalas. The Blood Elves, following the will of their crazed leader, Kael'thas Sunstrider, channel dangerous, chaotic magics to transform their sacred Sunwell into a gateway of unspeakable evil. While Kael'thas and his demonic masters were eventually defeated, a different kind of transformation occurred within the Sunwell itself, as a dying Naru sacrificed its life essence to reignite the Sunwell into a fount of holy energy. Now, the Blood Elf Regent Lorthamar Theron sees a new hope on the horizon for his people. Over time, the Sunwell's light could cure the Blood Elves of their cursed state. But many still cling to the arcane powers they've procured, and are hesitant to relinquish them. As one of the remaining Blood Elves, you must fight to protect Quel'Thalas, and help redeem the soul of your ancient people. Alrighty, so here we are in the world of Warcraft. This is going to be my character. Now, for those of you completely unfamiliar with the game, we are currently a level no level 1 uh, Blood Elf Mage, and we obviously are going to be leveling up. Now, this is an MMORPG, meaning that there's going to be different kinds of players in this game as well. You can see them walking around here already. Now, one thing you may note right from the get-go, for example, this is a mage right here as well, also currently at level 1. They look a little bit different, and that's the reason. Uh, the reason for that, rather, is that we are currently wearing some heirloom gear. 
So, heirloom gear is basically just a set of gear you can unlock once you already have characters at level 100 or the max level for that matter. And it will allow me to level up a little bit faster. Now, whether or not we're going to be rocking this gear all the way to level 100, I don't know. But obviously, um, we're going to be starting up with it because, hey, we're, we're just simply, simply going to be needing it in order to complete quests a little bit faster. Now, we're currently in one tiny little part of the world on the Sunstrider Isle. The Sunstrider Isle, however, is basically part of a zone called the Eversong Woods. And the Eversong Woods is only one little zone in a kingdom called the Eastern Kingdoms. Now, the Eastern Kingdom has all kinds of different aspects to it. We can explore all of it and we will eventually. However, there's going to be many more kingdoms to explore as well as different planets to be going to. And all in all, if you want to complete everything in World of Warcraft, it's going to take you very many years. Now, for the moment, we are just a level one badass. And it is time for me to get started. Now, as you may have noticed, my interface is looking a little bit differently. And man, we got a cool spell right from the get-go here uh, on that level 74 priest. Um, but my unit interface, or my, my UI rather, is, is very, very basic. Uh, this is the way I always have played World of Warcraft. I've always played it with the minimal amount of clutter on the screen. So we can enjoy the looks of the game as much as possible. If you're interested in the add-ons that I'm using, by the way, there will be a full list down below in the description of this video. But without further ado, it is time to get started. And in order to make things look a little bit better, I got another add-on. That basically shows us the storytelling of each and every quest. So obviously we can't start off with slaying dragons. We're gonna have to begin with the basics. And like I said, we're currently like a magic obsessed race. We basically have to try and control that that mana and that magic that we have over here uh, in order to actually not just basically go corrupt. Now I've done this starting zone once upon a time way back in the day. Uh, but I barely don't remember anything of it. And like I said, I played, you know, Alliance for many years, but not really any kind of horde. So for the first time ever, Let's get started on the Horde side of things. So our very first quest is gonna be called Reclaiming the Sunstrider Isle. The sooner you begin your education, Loco, the better for our soul. There is little room for error, so listen closely. The burning crystals, the green floating objects to the west of the Sunspire here, have long been used to power the Isle's experimentations. The mana worms were their guardians, but the Scourge invasion of Quel'Thalas has driven them errant from our lack of magical control over them. There is little choice but to thin their numbers, numbers for reclamation. Do this and then return to me. Alrighty, so we will have the different kinds of uh, quest objectives that we'll we obviously need to control and uh, the quest objective that we'll need to complete. And you can notice those right below um, the mini-map right here in the top right corner. So the mini-map will basically give me an indication of where I'm currently located, whereas the quest overview panel over here will show exactly what we need to know. Now, I can obviously go ahead and attack these mana worms. And the mana worms apparently need to be thinned out as they have been basically going rampant around this zone because, well, as you may have noticed already, um, the, uh, the blood elves are not in a state where they've always been. Now, in order to do so, I have different kinds of, uh, of spells available. At this point in the game, though, I only have the Frostfire Bolt as my offensive spell. Um, but eventually, as you may have already been aware of, uh, I got all kinds of spells to unlock. So eventually, we'll be unlocking many more. The first one will be Frost Nova, apparently, at level 3. Uh, but with the different classes in the game, you will also be unlocking different kinds of spells. Uh, for the moment, though, we only really have our Frostfire Bolt as well as our, our Arcane Torrent. Arcane Torrent is like a specific spell uh, for Blood Elves, but we'll just simply have to get started and use that, uh, that beam that we have uh, to clear out as many of these Mana Worms as possible. Now, one thing to note is that we are obviously running some with the Heirloom Gear, so we are going to be having uh, quite a more powerful setup. But also one thing to note is that I am currently on a completely fresh server. We're currently on the Twisting Nether. The Twisting Nether is a PvP realm on the European side of the world. And that means that I currently, you know, will be able to face opponents uh, at the very least at some point. But I currently don't really have any kind of gold available whatsoever. You see, by the way, my, uh, you know, my um, uh, allies right there, also from the Horde, are going to be uh, doing all kinds of cool looking spells. We'll get those eventually too. But I have absolutely no gold available. Now, I was able, though... 
to uh, to convince a couple of my friends to also start up again with some World of Warcraft action, and we will be meeting those at some point uh, during the game as well. But for the moment, as you can see, we are still at the very beginning of things, and we're you know slowly gonna be working our way up there. But not having any gold basically means that I am currently broke, and we're gonna have to start completely from scratch, working our way to the very top. We did just level up to level 2, and we also have killed enough mana worms in order to uh, obtain the quest objectives. Now, as you can see, it's a rather busy hour here already. I'm a little bit uh, later on into the day. We are on a very populated server, which I figured would be a good idea for reasons. Uh, we'll go over at some later time. But anyway, Yorona, what's going on? She says you have successfully completed your first task. For that, you are to be congratulated. Such success gives me faith that you will turn out not only be better than those young blood elves who failed to heed the lessons of their masters, um, but also continued success will be rewarded not only with knowledge, but also with tangible rewards as well. Alrighty. Your work, however, here is not finished. There is much more to learn, my young friend. Alrighty, so we've got ourselves a couple of rewards. Apparently, we've just unlocked uh, a new belt here. We'll equip that shortly. We also got some gold as well as experience for that. Loco, I hope you are ready to get to work, because there is much you, uh, for you to do here on the Sunstrider Isle. Ever since the destruction of the Sunwell by Arthas and the Scourge, we have been a race adrift on a sea of uncertainty. We teeter on the edge of oblivion. This will change, mage, and you will learn and aid our recovery at the same time. The Outland awaits us, and we're gonna be heading there at some point. So it looks like for the moment we're gonna be capable of playing with two quests. First one is going to be called Unfortunate Measures. Your effort has made something larger, or has made something clear that, honestly, I wish were not true. The unchecked power of the burning crystals has maligned a much larger swath of the Isle's natural balance than I had thought. We must now take on more unfortunate measures to reclaim control. The nearby lynxes have succumbed to the influence of the crystals, and they must be put down. Bring their colors, Loco, as I may yet be able to fashion a magical restraint to turn some back from being uncontrolled. Alrighty, I will have to destroy some lynxes, which is not a, not a very fun thing to do. Uh, but Loco, I also hope you're ready to get more work, because there's much more for you to do here over here. Ever since the destruction of the Sunwell by Artists and the Scourge, we've been a race adrift. You've already said that to me, woman. Let's do the mage's training. As you advance within your class, you will want to take advantage of the training your class trainer can provide you. For young mages here on the Sunstrider Isle, your trainer is gonna be Julia Sunstriker. Speak with Julia and see what training she has available for you. The things she will teach you do have a cost, so do bring some coin with you. Julia, as with all the trainers of the Sunstrider Isle, is in the or is inside the Sunspire on the lower level. We will have now, I already know where the Sun Spire is. It's gonna be the very first building that we came across. It's basically that big spire over here. Eventually, though, we'll be wandering out into the zone a little bit more. Now, she mentioned I need to bring coin. Uh, I don't really have any. I got, f well, I got 50 bronze right now, which, which is basically the smallest amount in the game possible. But with that, we'll just be talking here to Julia Sunstrider, uh, or Sunstriker rather, who's indicated right here with a question mark above her head. Basically, quests that I can accept will also show up as a exclamation point on the minimap. For, for the moment, this is just going to be a quest we can turn in. So, Julia, what's going on? The eternal sun guides us. Ah, Loco, I believe you're one of the new mages here on the Isle, yes? Well, you've come to the right place. If arcane mastery is what you seek, then I can provide such knowledge. As long as you have the wherewithal to handle training costs and the capacity to focus on the lessons I'll be teaching. Let's get started. Alrighty. As you begin to grow in power, your connection to the arcane will develop, granting you access to new spells. Go, develop your power and then demonstrate what you learned from me. Alrighty, so we need to reach level 3 and learn Frost Nova. Then we need to locate a training dummy outside of the Sunspire and practice it using it, or we need to practice it using it twice. Salam, Alrighty. Now we did level up once from the previous quest that we have done, so it's time for me to do the other quest first. Because we're currently, well as you can see, we're currently only level 2. That basically means that we have a little way to go. So that means that we need to destroy these lynxes. Now it's a little bit unfortunate. I I, I don't really want to kill any lynx, but I mean, if they if they need to go, and apparently if they have been corrupted, I think it's going to be the only uh, measure that we can do so far. Do we? Oh man, we can do. We can actually destroy the cups as well. I'm sorry, cups. 
I liked you guys very much, but uh, you're very cute, but I mean, I need to bring your color in order to... Oh, man, I'm sorry. Anyways, they do br drop their colors over here, which is gonna be rather helpful. We need to get eight of them. Now, one thing to note, by the way, in case you are unfamiliar with the complete setup that I've got going on right here. On the left side of the, um, of the bars over here, you will be able to see my health as well as my mana bar as an indicator right below it. Then, to the right, whatever I am targeting, so for example, these links over here, will show up over towards the, the right side. So I can target anything in the game, really, uh, that, you know, can be targeted, obviously, but I can target very many things. For example, this NPC over here as well. Apparently, it's just a bunch of, uh, bunch of guys hanging out over here. Oh, man, he just went to sleep right as I arrived here. Anyhow, we can see some more islands off there in the distance, and... <gasps> I think that's actually Silver Moon City. I have been in Silver Moon City once upon a time, but it's a very long time ago. Like I said, I've played Alliance for years, and basically if you're an Alliance player, you cannot be entering the Horde's uh, cities and vice versa. Well, you can enter them, but you will also be attacked. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and destroyed a couple more Lynxes. It's a bit of a sad story, but at the very least, it will allow me uh, to gather enough here to complete the objectives. Now, lucky for me, that does mean I don't need to destroy any more links, at least for the time being, so... <laughs> We're gonna leave it like that. And actually, those are the target dummies right here that we'll have to... What was it? Frost Nova on? I think so. But first up, we need to get to level 3. I think we should be able to automatically unlock that new spell. But Arona, we are back! It gives me no pleasure to ask you to destroy these beasts. While in times past, we have lived in relative harmony with woodland creatures, these are different times. The first order of business for all Cinderai is survival. Make sure you remember that. Alrighty. The tower and surrounding areas should be relatively secure, though only for the time being. You have done well in providing us with a buffer of security, but we'll need to reassert control over the entire aisle if we are to survive here in the long run. This will involve tackling much greater threats than errant mana worms and lynxes. Take this, Loco. You will no doubt make good use for it in your task to come. So she's also going to be rewarding me here Death with some sun bracers. You are to report to my assistant, Lanthan Perilon. He will instruct you on what needs to be done next. While we are here at the Sun Spire, you will continue to reign in the burning. Or uh, wait, wait, wait. While we are here, while we here at the, uh, while we here at the Sun Spire will continue to reign in the burning crystals. You will be focused on a more pressing matter concerning Valthrian, the Valthrian Academy. Lanthan will explain fully when you speak to him. Simply walk west here along the path. All right, it's going to be this path right here, and you should be able to see him standing close by. Good luck, Loker. Your continued successes shall be rewarded. Alright, so we have gone ahead and accepted that uh, that quest you just gave me. So, as you can see, we did just level up. Meaning that on my action bar over here, we did just get another spell called Frost Nova. Now, I'm going to be moving a couple of things around here just because I've already got my hotkey set up uh, to properly be used here. Obviously, I could technically click these buttons if I wanted to. Uh, but they're very, very, uh, very, very uh, silly, I suppose, like to do that. I, I use hold keys, even though you're not seeing the bindings. I am clicking them. Uh, so first off, we right now have the Frostfire Bolt. Though we've just unlocked our Frost Nova. It blasts enemies within 12 yards of the caster for 7 frost damage and freezes them in place. And really, the freezing in place is going to be the most important part. Uh, in particular, once we specialize to be a Frost Mage, this is going to be a really important spell. Uh, and I also have the Arcane Torrent. And the Arcane Torrent is a spell specifically uh, for Blood Elves. It silences all enemies around me and also gives me some mana back. And that's basically just uh, because we are obsessed with magic. We are Blood Elves after all. Um, we are going to be able to, uh, you know, to use that every now and then. It's a ha one and a half minute cooldown, however, so you can see the number right here on the action bar that indicates how much longer we will need to wait in order to use it. Now, we did just get a couple of things as well. We did just get a couple of quest rewards. So as you can see, currently we are only really equipping the heirloom gear, but I did just get myself a belt that I can go ahead and... Dragon drop over here, and as you can see, my character right now will be wearing a belt as well. I did just already get another one, but this is going to be a male belt, and I can't use that as I'm a cloth wearer. Um, and I also got myself some bracers that will also equip here. So there we go. Things are looking pretty good. Now, remember the mage um, in the uh, spire right here that gave me an objective to go ahead and use Frost Nova on some target dummies? We have to use it twice, but I think if we just use Frost Nova in between two of the training dummies over here, we're going to be a-okay. And there we go, indeed. 
So as you can see, this will freeze them in place, which is coming, which is gonna come in handy in particular later on. So for the moment, we'll just be heading back towards Julia now that we have completed her quest. Glory to the Sindori. You're a quick study, Loco. I look forward to the opportunity to teach you again in the future. Remember the sun well. Alrighty. Thank you very much, ma'am. So even though not all quests will show that they're gonna be rewarding, you know, gold or, or you know, uh, experience or whatever, most of them do, and at the very least, they will pretty much always uh, give you experience. Now notice on the minimap, there's a couple more indications of exclamation points here that basically say, hey, you can pick up a quest over here too. So, Solanian, what are you up to, sir? The Sunspire held a beautiful vantage of the Sunwell once. Our lives have been turned upside down, Loco, but we nonetheless carry on. It is our way. We are survivors. If you are to survive this upheaval, to carry on in your own right, then you must learn how to survive. All Blood Elves must do this. You must master your insatiable, insatiable hungering for magic before it masters you. Okay, so he's giving me two quests. Day after day I stand here, watching, waiting. I've been accused of dwelling too much on our past, while my eyes look to the horizon. But it is my firm belief that each visitor to this island should honor those who have sacrificed all so that they may continue to do so. Dothremar Sunstrider was our very first king. He led us from Kalimdor through the Millstrom. Seek out his shrine to the west and do not return to me until you have read the plaque upon his honor. Okay, I can do that. So obviously that's gonna be the first blood elf king. We were we were basically uh, we were basically high elves before uh, we arrived over here, and we took the Millstrom, as you may have already noticed. I'll indicate that in just a second, but we took the Millstrom in order to you know eventually end up over here. The Sunspire held a beautiful vantage on, of the Sunwell once. Our lives have been turned upside down, Loco, but we nonetheless carry on. If you are to survive this upheaval, then you must learn how to survive. About you. We've already did, we've already discussed that, sir. Alrighty, so Salonian's belongings. With all the chaos happening here at the Sunspire, I haven't had a chance to collect my belongings I've left outside at various places on the aisle. I must maintain my vigil over the sun while here, so I'll ask you to collect them in my stead. I need my scrying orb, my scroll of scorch magic, and my journal. Use this satchel for some extra space, as my things are rather bulky. Return them to me, and I'll give you something, you know, for the effort. You can keep the satchel as well. Alrighty. So, we have just actually automatically equipped another bag over here that basically allows me to get a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, storage, I suppose. Now, with that, I'm gonna be making a jump down here. Ooh, shouldn't hurt me. There we go. Uh, to talk to Arcanist Ethanas, who also now will be able to give us a quest now that we have hit level 3. A, new Bellore de la Na. a fistful of slivers. It's a shame that we have lost control of many of the creatures here on the island. This was once a tranquil place of study and research. Now it's all we can do to keep from being attacked by our own creations. I'm going to offer you a chance to receive a magical boon in exchange for some collecting work on your part. Bring me a stack of arcane slivers that are found on the mana-using creatures of the Sunstrider Isle, and I will cast a spell on you that should aid you on your adventures on the Isle. Okay, I can do that. So this is an example right here of a quest that will be rewarding with experience, but isn't actually immediately mentioned right off the bat. Actually, there's some, there's some, there's some vendors over here. Um, your gold is welcome here. How nice of you to say that, woman. Uh, but we'll go ahead and just sell all of this junk because once again, we do need to, you know, we do need to be, you know, we need to basically make sure we at the very least have some income because at the moment I've got basically nothing other than completing some of the quests. So it looks like Arcanist Helion over here also has a quest for me available. If there is only one lesson, he says, you deign to remember from your time on the Sunstrider Isle, let it be this. Control your thirst for magic. It is a thirst unending loco. What you absorb must be controlled and released via Arcane Torrent. Failure uh, is to become one of the regent. Hopefully, or hopelessly addicted and insane already. So apparently if you get consumed by the magic, you will be, you know, what apparently is going to be called a regent. Seek out a mana worm and unleash your arcane torrent upon it. Learn to master your power. When you have sufficiently released an arcane torrent, then re okay, then return to me. The well, there's actually there's actually if I'm not mistaken, mana worms over here, right? Oh well, there's a pop oh, yeah, there we go. I was gonna say there's a bunch of dead ones, but we can just use the spell of the arcane torrent just like that. 
And apparently that was already enough to actually complete that quest. It was basically just to teach me uh, that that was a thing. And we actually also just... Yeah, this, so this is a good example right here. We also just have collected an arcane sliver, which is one of the other quests that we already were completing. So normally, you grab all of the quests in one little hub, and then you complete them all at once. But Helion, I did manage to complete it, sir. You've done well today, Loka. Your willingness to learn shows that you may very well rise above the unyielding cravings you must endure as a blood elf. Rest not on your laurels, young one, but in instead seek to master what you have learned. Only through diligence will we as a race survive. Take this. It may be of use to you. Go now and bring glory once more to our people. Keep your Alrighty. About you. So we got ourselves some more legs. We can use those, I suppose, if we really wanted to. But we should be okay, just as we are at this point. Now, our main quest, if I'm not mistaken, is to go south right here. Remember that the, um, the lady over there actually gave that quest to us to seek out her assistant. And I think that's him right here, Lanthan. Yeah, there we go. Paralon, I think that's his assistant, or her assistant at the very least, is what she said. So, we'll accept his quests and then head towards the other objective. And as you can see, basically my entire map right now is blue. What business have you? Magistrix Hirona told me you'd be along quick enough, Loco. The Valtrian Academy to our west, the huge floating building with the ornate spires, is in bad shape. You're going to be leading the effort to recapture it from one of the Regid, a blood elf who has forever succumbed to their basest cravings. I hope you're ready to work. This is not only going to be a lesson about danger, but also of what happens when you forsake the realities of who you are. Joel Aram. Before sending you to the academy, I want you to go on another task that needs to be dealt with immediately. Once used to aid us in the gardening of the Sunstrider Isle, the bestial tenders now have grown out of control. Clear them out with due haste, but be warned, their lack of control has made them aggressive. It is such aggression that forces us to put down these once gentle servants. It doesn't please me to ask you to do this task, but survival is survival. I will mourn later. And with that, it is time for me to get started. And we will have to destroy several minions at once. So I think I think that is the spires that he was talking about at the very least. I think that's where the quest is going to be leading us eventually. But for the moment, I'm going to go ahead here and... Well, I don't really want to destroy any more mana worms. That's a little sad. We'll see if we... Oh, man. Do we really have to tree or kill trees now? I'm sorry, tree bros. You guys seem actually really quite nice, but... Apparently, apparently you're 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 meant to be destroyed now So I've been destroying a couple of these tenders already slowly, but surely. Oh, man, there's a naga going over here uh, But slowly, but surely completing the different quests now for those of you by the way curious about what my plans are as far as leveling goes Like I said, it is not my goal to level up as fast as I possibly can I will definitely be taking my time with it now, whether or not I will show all of it on these YouTube videos, I, I don't think so. I'm, I'm gonna be cutting out parts just to make sure that you guys aren't gonna be watching like 100 episodes of this, right? We do want to make sure that we keep the progress rather high. So while I may be making uh, some continuous episodes here and there, I'm also gonna be playing in between just to make sure that we get from zone to zone and we progress in that story a little bit faster. I also don't plan on actually running any kind of quest or any kind of... Um, I don't really plan on running any kind of, um, you know, dungeons other than maybe once to get the extra experience from the quests that are in those dungeons. But basically just to, you know, keep the dungeon finding and whatnot to a minimum and really enjoy the world. So one of the quests that I have to complete is to look out for the grave of the first king. And that's going to be right here, the Shrine of Dothramar. So we apparently just have to read this little, this little stone here. You have discovered the location of the shrine. Upon further examination, you sense a stronger pulse of the strange power that has gripped the isle. You feel a bit uncomfortable standing by the shrine and perhaps a little disturbed. The bronze placard along the side of the shrine reads, Here stands the shrine of Dath Ramar, a fitting tribute to a noble elf. Let all who gaze on this monument remember his sacrifices for our people and his dedication to the cause of our continued survival. All who prosper in Quilthalas do so thanks to him. That's very beautiful, actually. Alrighty. So now that we've completed that quest as well by reading that little uh, that little story, I suppose, and reading the plaque on his grave, or on his shrine, rather, 
Um, we're gonna have to look out for Salonian's belongings, who have apparently been scattered all over this area. Now, they are indicated right there on the minimap, which is nice. So, the first thing I'm gonna pick up right here is going to be the Scroll of Scourge Magic. One thing, by the way, that I absolutely love about World of Warcraft is just the way the zones look. And I know, aesthetically, the game may not be the most beautiful one in the world, and people keep mentioning that. But the thing is... I love the atmosphere in this game, and I think graphics sure are a, a really important thing. And by the way, that's where the second item is, the scrying orb, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there we go. Um, but, but like, the, the aesthetics and whatnot are very important, and the way the graphics look are very important. But I would say the atmosphere is what makes this game as superior to many other MMORPGs out there. The world really does feel alive, but more importantly... All of the zones have this unique characteristic to it. So notice, right? This zone right here is really focused around warm, um, uh, warm, um, um, bright colors, right? Whereas other ones may be a little bit different. But on top of that, we have this sad, somber music in the background. And I would say, like, the combination of the two sort of makes you... Makes you aware of, of the, the state, I guess, that the Blood Elves are in at this point in the story, right? Like, we're basically in a very solemn, solemn place where we don't feel very good about the current situation. And we wish we could change it, but, you know, we're still, like, hopeful about what could be happening. Maybe that's just me, but that's one of the things that I personally absolutely adore about World of Warcraft. It's just something that really uh, makes me, you know, enjoy the story a lot more. And World of Warcraft is one of the few games... Where I actually go ahead and just mute the um, the music that I'm running myself and just listen to the in-game music as it really adds to the game. Obviously, once you grind zones over and over and over again, it may be a little bit difficult. Uh, and it may not be nearly as enjoyable anymore. But definitely the first time you're in a zone and you're reading the quest and you're trying to figure out what the story is. I think the, you know, the complexity of the music and the... The uh, additions of the of the of the graphics and the color scheme and whatnot are really important. I think at the very least that that's the case. That's, is that just me? Let me know down below in the comment section of the video. Am I am I off on a tantrum here, or am I am I just crazy, or <laughs> do you guys actually agree with me that that is actually a really big part of the experience of World of Warcraft? Either way, though, we have completed Selenian's quests. The Sun Spire held a beautiful Vandress on the Sun well once. If you are survived, yeah, okay, we've already said this, sir. So we got the Shrine of Dath Ramar. Ah, Loco, thank you for sharing your experience at the Shrine of Dath Ramar. First off, you should be commended for your sense of duty and respect. It will serve you well, not only here, but in all of Azeroth as well. As for the odd sensation, it is no doubt a contributing part of the taint that has befallen Sunstrider Isle. We shall keep an eye on it. Thank you for alerting us to it. Remember the Sunwell. Have you had a chance to find my belongings, he asks. Once we reassert our dominance over the Sunstrider Isle, I will need them in my work. For now, though, I must maintain my watch. I have. I have found them, sir. Well done. I know you'd be perfect for the task. Once it is safe for us to make use of the outdoor facilities on the Isle, I'll be putting these things to good use. Like I mentioned, feel free to keep the satchel. Also, you may find this piece of armor to be helpful. Oh, we got some gloves here. Consider it ample compensation for the simple task performed dutifully. The reckoning is at hand. Okay, so that's good. We actually got some gloves here that we can go ahead and equip. If I'm not mistaken, we should be just fine. There we go. The next up, we also have Ithanas, or uh, Ithanas right here over, uh, over in the corner. Many of the creatures here on the Isle were at one point bounded to non-aggression and complacency by our magical skills. When the Scourge destroyed the Sunwell, yeah, yeah, we've already talked about that, though, didn't we? Anyways, better still, perhaps the slivers that I've collected for him could be of use to see what malice the Isle truly suffers under. Splendid, these will do nicely. I've been doing quite a bit of thinking on the current malice Sunstrider Isle suffering under. One possible course of action I have pondered was to collect these arcane slivers from the beasts on the Isle. In doing so, they could be experimented on. This would provide a potential source of culpa culpability... There we go. Anyways, I will tend to this research. Allow me to place this incantation on you. I believe it will make or you'll make good use of it. We will have justice. Alrighty, so we did just level up once again to level 5 and apparently unlocked the Fire Blast skill. We'll go over that in a second. Uh, but as far as the buffs go that we got going on on my character, they will show right here to the bottom left corner of my unit frame. So we got the Bonfire's Blessing. Your Bonfire is burning hot. And we also have the Fortitude of the Sindorai. 
It increases my stamina and my spirit by 5. So basically, stamina as a skill, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that increases my total amount of health. At the very least, obviously, with this one for 30 minutes. And also, my spirit will be increased for a little while. And that spirit uh, basically means the amount of mana regeneration that I'm having in combat, if I'm not mistaken. But either way, um, we have now also managed to get towards uh, Lanthon over here for the main objective and the main quest and the storyline that we have going on on the aisle. While the deaths of the tenders give me no joy whatsoever, it does show me that you're ready for the most important task you'll do here on the Sunstrider Isle. Take this and put it to good use. You'll need good items and sharp wits for the task ahead. Our reassertion of control over the island depends on it. A betrayer of our people recites atop flat Fall Trian Academy to the southwest. I'm really butchering these names, by the way. I apologize. Falandren is his name, and he was banished from Blood Elf lands from failing to heed the warnings of our teachers and elders. He is the worst of our society, as he lives only to feed the insatiable uh, magical addictions. He refused to learn control, he is a shell of his former self, one of the wretched, and he is a threat to the Sunspire. Destroy him and the raids he uses as minions. Okay. We will have justice. So there's definitely a little bit of a different quest than destroying links and whatnot. And I believe that we indeed do have to go off in that little corner. And if I'm not mistaken, that is going to be one of the final quests that we will be uh, completing on the aisle before we head over the bridge into the main part of the world. But obviously there's something going on over here. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Either way, we'll have to make sure that we... Start climbing this spire here in order to uh, apparently make things a little bit more manageable once again now As you may have noticed there's definitely a lot of other players also rocking around over in this area uh, So they may very well have already cleaned up a couple of the issues that we or a couple of the minions that we were supposed to take out such as this uh, They have raid as well as you can see there's a couple more of these little you know dead arcane rates over here Either way, though, we have just unlocked one of the main spells here as well, known as Fire Blast. And Fire Blast obviously is the main spell in particular for Arcane, or for, for Fire Mages. So for the Mage, uh, we will be able to specialize in one of three uh, options. So we can go for a Frost Mage setup, where we basically focus on freezing spells and uh, crowd control and whatnot. We can try and freeze people in place. Uh, we can also focus on Fire Mages, and they definitely are most of the time focus on like... Um, a lot more, um, a lot more play around, say, like, damage over time and burning people up and whatnot. Uh, and then we also have Arcane Magic. That's a little bit more fancy, but you'll explain, or you, you'll see what that is going to be all about once we get there. So let me actually use a Fire Blast here. As you can see, there's a cooldown on it, but it is an instant cast, so it's going to do quite a little bit of damage. Now, we did just loot this Chainted Arcane Sliver. This Arcane Sliver glows with an eerie luster, and this is actually something we can use as a quest. You found an old sliver of crystallized mana on the corpse of the Tainted Arcane Wraith. The sliver is different than others you may have seen in that it's dark and sinister looking as the Wraith you looted it from. Just holding it gives you a sense of unnatural foreboding. Arcanist Helion at the gazebo of the Sunspire on the Sunstrider Isle uh, just might be someone who wants to use or wants to have use for the sliver. Okay, we'll go ahead and accept that quest as well. Uh, obviously, that's going to be uh, Helion, who also previously uh, made me uh, made me collect a couple more other uh, other uh, uh, slivers too. But slowly but surely, we are going to go ahead and climb the spire and see if we can find Valandron. Because as you can see, the quest objective tells me, and I think he's going to be way up here. But the quest objective tells me that we need to bring his head in order to uh, restore the balance in this uh, in this uh, this area over here. Looks like there's actually several people over here right now waiting for him to come back to life as well. Now the funny thing is that obviously we're gonna be 3 feet one ing him and we're all running pretty good gear here. <laughs> and as you can see, he just respawned but he immediately got shut down by that blood elf rogue. Oh man. We're all fighting over the same objective. Got him! Got him! I think I got him! Nice. <laughs> so we didn't loot his head. Now I just need to go ahead and collect a couple more raids. And he, by the way, did say something. He said, take heart, your friends will no longer mourn your passing. Uh, which basically means that he was assuming he was going to be able to kill me. But he literally died 
within a second of him turning back alive. And obviously, depends on the time that you're playing it, but obviously, uh, if you're not running the most fancy gear in the world, then, you know, you're not running at the prime time of World of Warcraft, right around in the later stages of the afternoon and the early evening, uh, generally speaking, you will be finding uh, that he will be a little bit more tricky, and, you know, everyone that's going to be over here will be... Oh man, I want to jump it, but I don't think I should risk it. But everything that you want to destroy here is going to be alive. Now, I'm going to go ahead and clean up a couple more raids and then head back towards the main quest giver. So I've managed to complete the objective that was given to me and it's time for me to head back towards Paralon over here, standing around the corner now that we've basically cleared up the threat. He dwelled his warning. He's only a symptom of a much larger promise. His demise will solve our immediate concerns, but all of the Blood Elves sh share the potential same fate as him if we let our addictions get the best of us. Well, we didn't manage to clean it up. Valandrin's head, you are to be commended, Loco. You've successful, or you've, you've have succeeded where others like Valandrin have utterly failed. Perhaps you are truly ready to be a contributing member of the Blood Elf Society. Your success here means that you are capable of surviving the greater threats that lurk in Eversong, and believe me, there are plenty to face. Hold your head high. Magistrix Arona wanted you to head over to the Silver Moon City in order to aid our reclamation efforts there. That is, once you have successfully addressed the situation at the Valtrian Academy. You did not disappoint us, Loco. On your way to the Valken Wing Square, south of here, you should speak with Outrunner Alarion. She's not far from the bridge. The Outrunners take care of the shuttling goods between here and the mainland, and since you've proven to be so resourceful, they could use your assistance. Now before we head out, we gotta make sure we talk to Helion real quick, because we found that, that corrupt sliver. From your demeanor, you seem to be having a... Uh, you seem to be on a matter of some urgency. Is there something specific I can assist you with? Well, we got a tainted, uh, tainted sliver, sir. This is most interesting, and when I say interesting, I mean more disturbing than anything else. Our efforts to reassert control over the Isle in the time following the destruction of the Sunwell may have been a challenge. I suspect that whatever foul source is corrupting the Isle is at the heart of it all. This sliver may be of some aid in uncovering what is really going on. You were, to, you were wise to bring this to me, Loco. Take this as a compensation for your diligence. Thank you. Okay, so we got some more gold because of that. But with that... We have basically completed everything that there was to do on the Sunstrider Isle, and it's time for us to already head, you know, towards the next main city. And we've been given an objective to head towards Silver Moon City. Now, Silver Moon City is the main city, the capital for the Blood Mage or for the Blood Elves, and that basically means that I'm gonna be I'm gonna be going to a city where I haven't really been to. Uh, other than, you know, checking it out briefly. So for those of you unfamiliar, basically if you're an alliance player, which I used to be for years, you're at a constant battle with the Horde, and that means you've got your own capital cities to go to, but you can't actually go to the opposing faction's capital city uh, without being attacked. So basically you, kept, uh, you keep being attacked, and you keep being under pressure, and you weren't really able to get into the city and actually properly check out what's going on. Now, I know very well that that is one of the most... Uh, beautiful cities in the game and we can already see the ruins right there in the background or at the very least if I'm not mistaken Those are going to be the ruins that we see right off there in the distance and eventually we will be able to get to the main city as well uh, But I've never actually properly explored the area before so we have been given a quest to go ahead and uh, head towards uh, aiding the outrunners so basically the uh, the woman over there that is gonna be uh, you know giving us the next quest to head through the gates into the Eversong Woods. But this is where I'm going to be ending this video. So in this particular instance, I will more than likely continue onwards where we leave off, or where we leave off today. However, in the upcoming episodes, I'm probably going to be spending up to a couple of minutes to maybe a couple of hours in between episodes to speed up the process a little bit more. Just so we can keep on making progress and we keep on progressing in the story of the Blood Elf Mage, called Loco on the Twisting Nether server. And with that, I'm gonna be ending this one. Let me know down below the, in the comment section of the video what you thought of this. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it. I have been super excited to start up a new series again on the channel. It has been quite some time. 
And, um, you know, with the upcoming launch of Legion and with the recent release of Warcraft, I don't think there's going to be a better time than right now. But with that, I'm going to be ending this video right here, right now. I want to thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, alright? And I'll see you in the next one. Boom!